Today, I'm going to be talking about prostate cancer. I know in, in the past, I made a video about this uh, particular topic, you know, but I did not uh, really uh, elaborate enough in the video, all right? But today, I'm going to go deeper um, about this uh, prostate cancer of a thing, all right? Uh, if you are a man, uh, this video is for you. I want you to pay undivided attention to this video. Uh, it could save your life and, or it could save uh, the life of somebody close to you. You know, um, information they say is the key. Okay? Um, if you are above the age of 40 as a man, um, your prostate cancer must have enlarged enough, you know, uh, that it will start to uh, negatively impact your urination, okay? So, uh, that is when um, you need to do something about it, you know, that's why uh, some doctors always say that uh, when you are above the age of 40, you should come for prostate cancer checkup, all right? Um, if you noticed, when we were younger, you know, um, I will use myself as, uh, as an example. You know, when I was younger, when I pee, I, my pee usually go like very far. Like yeah, that time I can even, even use it to, to write my name on the ground. Psst, it goes like this. Psst. And when you are above the age of 40, you will notice that it has declined. You cannot longer do that. You cannot do that. Your pee cannot go far again. All right? So um, your prostate has enlarged. All right? Uh, but I have a clip to show you guys. And um, in the clip, this guy threw more light on this topic. So I want us to listen to this guy first. Then uh, I will elaborate more on this topic. Let's watch the guy first. Then. Um, we we'll continue from there. Go ahead. Listen and pay very attention. Listen and be very attentive or what? English is not my language, actually. So, actually, on a very serious note, have you wondered why most Reverend Fathers come down with prostate cancer at the end of their life? If you check the statistics of people that have prostate cancer in life, most of them are people who live celibate life. Celibate is that you don't knock or reverend fathers have you wondered why i know some christians are following me you will say i'm promoting pre, pre, uh, uh, pre marital sex that, that, that. no i'm teaching medicine i'm teaching what my profession represents so don't be angry i'm going to explain to you there is something called the prostrate gland that every man has that prostrate gland produces the seminal fluid why the test is simple arm produces the sperm cells so when you knock and release as a man that thing you are releasing is semen semen is combination of that seminal fluid plus sperm cells waiting they produce that seminal fluid now that prostrate gland now that prostrate gland is usually very small in every man when they give birth to you as a matter of fact i think it's about 30 grams grams when you are small that's why when we are small we can actually urinate and use our urine to play around you see small thing small picking you go feel peace the thing will go oh when i was small if i see lizard that is when i remember to urinate <laughs> i could just carry the thing the portion where you go where you go where you go <laughs> you will just see ants on the floor you will not remember one quotation in the bible when you want to urinate surely there's a gather and if their gathering is not of the Lord, they shall scatter. You go take your urine, scatter all those things. Did you notice the, when you now start growing up as a man, you can no longer do those things. You can no longer peace. May your peace go up. Have you noticed it? Yes, now. So as we are growing, that prostrate gland, it, goes, it, it will start enlarging. By the time you get to 40, it could not enlarge, reach a, 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 a certain extent. Now, prostrate gland is only for men. It's not in women. That is 
said that prostate cancer can only happen to men, not women. Another prostate gland will produce seminal fluid. And you are not knocking, you are not putting it in use. Are you getting? You can also relate it to that law in biology, secondary school, law of use and disuse. The more you they use something, the more you they work. If you know they use something, it's not working. Our right hand is stronger than the left because we use more of the right hand than the left hand. If you don't use your look all the time, you go they strong because you don't use them all the time. If you don't they use them, nah. <laughs> Sometimes you guys blow trumpet before the thing arrives. Anyway, on a very serious note. So what I'm saying is, in all of all this, when you get to 40, it start enlarging. A lot of men are likely to come down to prostatitis, inflammation of the prostate, or BPH, benign hyperplasia, or even uh, prostate cancer itself. If you now have prostate cancer, sometimes you will notice as an adult after urinating, you will fed the thing, fed the thing, fed the thing, but like two drops will still drop on your boxers. You always urinating all the time, in, uh, urine incontinence, you know, incomplete emptying. These are some of the symptoms you will be seeing. They will not say you need to go and check. They will not do you physical examination. Doctor will pull your hand inside, check your prostate. Then they will now come and do you PSA, prostate specific antigen. If it is positive, it means send a prostate to cancer. They will now start praying whether it is benign or malignant. Benign means it cannot spread. Malignant means it can spread to other organs. But there is a solution. There's something you're supposed to do. Yes, there's a solution, like you said in the video. All right, but before I go into that, let's elaborate more on this topic. All right. Prostate in a man is quite different from uh, prostate in a woman. And it's, it's not even called prostate, like um, the women's side. It's not called prostate. They call it uh, scanning gland. Uh, this medical terms, man. All right, read it, read it on the screen. I don't want to cut my tongue. All right. So they work differently. They don't work the same. Okay. Uh, now let's go um, into the solution. Uh, the number one solution is knocking, which is which is sex. You know, <laughs> we generally call it knocking in uh, Nigeria, right? So uh, the number one solution is sex, and you have to have sex like like 21 times in a month, 21 times. So. Um, I, I, I believe the guy made an error and um, yeah, it was an oversight when he said um, 21 times in a week, right? That was an error. I, I'm not here to blame him, you know, uh, people make mistakes and all that. So I'm just here to tell you that it's 21 times in a month, all right? Um, that 21 times, you know, uh, some women, they might find it overwhelming, right? Especially uh, the women that doesn't like to um, to have sex. There are women like that, you know. They don't like sex like like up to 21 times in a month. Uh, but I'm gonna give you a logic that you can use. All right. Um, that 21 times you can equally break it into two. You know how do you do that? Uh, the way you do that is um, anytime you are having a sexual intercourse. Uh, make sure you have at least a minimum two two times right so anytime you are uh, you are making out uh, make sure you have at least two times okay that way it's going to break uh, the 21 times into two so you will only have to like ask your woman for sex for like 10 to 11 times in a month you know which is not bad uh, I find that 21 times overwhelming for them, right? So I don't want them to see you like uh, someone that is addicted to sex or something, right? So um, have at least minimum of two times anytime you're having uh, sexual intercourse. And, um, and that two times is, is important because it's going to help the man, all right? This is in favor of the man. Uh, let me explain that. Uh, that two times will literally um, empty your scrotums, right? Um, you all know what scrotum is, right? So it's going to empty your scrotums uh, to create room for the, for the fluids coming from uh, the, the pro 
post it. You know, he said, like he said in the video, uh, there's fluid that that comes from the um, the prostate that's supposed to join with your sperm cells, right? So you have to create room for that fluid to be able to um, to have room, right? You have to create room for that fluid. Okay, so when you create room for that fluid, that is when um, you can be able to uh, protect yourself from having a prostate cancer. Create room and the fluid can be able to go freely and um, once it's there, have sexual intercourse, discharge it. That's why I said minimum of two, right? So when you have two times, uh, two, uh, two times of, uh, uh, when you're having sexual intercourse and you have it for like two times, it's gonna help empty your scrotums. You know you have uh, two scrotums, right? So that scrotums, you have to empty them. Right? When you don't empty them and the spends and the, uh, the prostate uh, fluid are stuck there, um, it's going to affect you, uh, which can result in a prostate cancer. All right? So um, when you have um, sexual intercourse up to 21 times a month, you can be able to protect yourself from prostate cancer. And number two is uh, eating of uh, tomatoes. You guys heard him in the video um, that car, um, that um, that uh, tomatoes they have uh, what they call uh, uh, lycopene. So that lycopene helps um, in uh, protecting our prostate, right? So when you eat eat lots of tomatoes, it's going to help you protect yourself. All right, and the third one that he, he forgot to mention is carrots. So carrots are equally good um, to protect you from having a prostate cancer. And when you eat lots of carrots, it's going to help you too. You know, in protecting yourself. All right. So, but the number one, number one is snacking, which is sex. So have sex at least twenty-one times in a month. Right. Like I've given you the logic to break it down, break it down to 10 to 11 times by having uh, two times in each intercourse. All right, that is going to help you. All right, if you have learned something from this video, uh, please like, comment, and don't forget to share. Share this video. My videos uh, are very, very educative. For yeah, they are educative. If you, if you learn something, share it to other people so that they will also learn something from it. You never know you could be saving a life. Life. Information they said is the key. Alright? So pass out this information by sharing this video. Alright? Thanks for watching. I will see you next time. Have a nice day.